Beetlejuice's enigmatic fading has been figured out. The enigmatic occurrence started back in 2019, and we have produced some videos about its causes the previous year. New Hubble data and evidence, however, have surfaced that provide an explanation for the red giant's dimming and provide an answer to the question of what precipitated this occurrence. Hubble, a NASA telescope, has just made new discoveries and information regarding the puzzling behavior involving this red giant. Let's discuss that and other things. One of the huge stars that is closest to Earth is Betelgeuse, which is about 700 light years away. The heated core's gravitational hold on the star's outer layers is tenuous, and the old star has progressed to the point where it expands and emits a dull red light. The heartbeat of the star is present, albeit it is exceedingly slow and unpredictable. The surface of the star changes size intermittently over time. One of these cycles lasts for a little over five years and is quite regular. The next cycle is shorter and more erratic, lasting between six months to one and a half years. Although these shifts are simple to monitor using ground-based telescopes, they do not result in the dramatic alterations in the star's light that were noticed during the dimming event. What then led to it? In the winter sky, Betelgeuse appears as a brilliant, ruby-red, shimmering pinpoint of light on Orion the hunter's upper right shoulder. It turns out to be a seething beast with a pulse that lasts 400 days and pulses consistently. This aging star is categorized as a supergiant because of its amazing 1 billion mile diameter growth. It would orbit Jupiter if placed in the solar system's center. A supernova is the star Betelgeuse's last phase. When this happens, it will be strong enough to be seen from Earth in the midday sky. But scientists have been detecting a lot of fireworks already going off before the final detonation. Hubble and other observatories helped astronomers come to the conclusion that the star ejected a significant amount of its visible surface into space in 2019. Astronomers had never witnessed a star behave in this way before. Large-scale ejections of the corona, our sun's outer atmosphere, occur often. In contrast to what was seen for Betelgeuse, these coronal mass ejection episodes are orders of magnitude weaker. Scientists were perplexed by the behavior and questioned whether the star would soon go supernova. A brief cold region on the star's southern surface, equivalent to a sunspot, or a clump of material making the star appear fainter to observers on Earth were the only two explanations they could find. It was discovered that not much had actually changed around the star when additional observations were made using other frequencies, such as infrared, indicating that it was not going through a major change and it would most definitely not explode as a supernova, not for at least the next 10,000 years. A mid-remission from the surface, which produced a sizable dust cloud, was most likely the cause of what was happening to Betelgeuse after numerous significant observations at various frequencies and extremely thorough investigations by some of the best scientists in the world. The star was effectively occluded when this dust cloud was blasted from the surface, which is what led to the overall dimming effect. Everyone agreed that this explanation made sense and was supported by evidence gathered from numerous telescopes. One thing remained to be clarified, though, what specifically happened to Betelgeuse three years earlier that could have contributed to this phenomenon? And perhaps more importantly, will it repeat itself? In a recent NASA publication, this question is addressed. This research was carried out by the renowned scientist who, in 1996, became the first person to ever use the Hubble telescope to picture the surface of Betelgeuse. They even managed to capture stunning photos of Betelgeuse that resolved the sunspots on its surface. In order to understand this puzzling phenomenon, the same group of scientists watched this star once more. But in this instance, they didn't just utilize Hubble, they also employed other observatories. 
New spectroscopic and imaging data from the Stellar Robotic Observatory, the Tillinghast Reflector Shell Spectrograph, TRACE, at the Fred L. Whipple Observatory, the NASA Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory Spacecraft, Stereo A, the NASA Hubble Space Telescope, and the American Association of Variable Star Observers, AAVSO, are also included. However, the Hubble data was the most useful in this situation and the one that enabled us to find a solution. Betelgeuse is not very spherical, as is typical of very massive stars, and has at least 16 times the actual mass of our Sun. In fact, a study published recently, only a few months ago, found that it can be challenging to locate the center of these enormously massive stars. In order to find the star's core, astronomers typically look for the star's center of brightness. However, for a typical red giant star like Betelgeuse, the real center of brightness, the point of greatest luminosity, tends to hop around or practically dance around, making it difficult to pinpoint the location of the star and therefore measure its distance, suggesting that these stars are simply very active. They are quite unanticipated, and their surface activity and morphology are not particularly steady. They are quite dynamic and constantly changing, which is why it doesn't look like a sphere at this place, but rather like an interesting blob that isn't particularly thick. Scientists were able to determine that Betelgeuse was shedding a sizable piece of its visible surface and creating a substantial surface mass ejection by analyzing the Hubble data. Any type of star has never before experienced this. Betelgeuse's surface mass ejection launched 400 billion times more mass into space than our sun's coronal mass ejections did. A large portion of the star's photosphere was likely fractured when such a large amount of mass left the star's surface. The gas then cooled to form a dust cloud, which effectively blocked the star's light as seen from Earth and had a short-lived dimming effect. The star, Betelgeuse, has also been significantly impacted by this unique event, the first of its sort ever recorded, and is currently healing. For instance, different convection cells that are present within the star and that typically drive pulsation and material circulation may have been disturbed by this event and are still sloshing around wildly, unable to create regular pulsations. These fresh discoveries shed light on how red stars lose mass before the supernova explosions as their nuclear fusion furnaces burn out. Their fate is significantly influenced by the amount of mass lost. On the other hand, Betelgeuse's unusually obnoxious behavior does not indicate that the star is about to erupt anytime soon. The mass loss event is therefore not always a sign of an impending explosion. Scientists are currently putting the puzzle pieces of the star's stubborn behavior before, during, and during the eruption together to make a coherent story of a hitherto unobserved, massive convulsion in an old star. The 2019 epic outburst may have been caused by a convective plume that was more than a million miles wide and was bubbling up from the star's interior. It produced shocks and pulsations that blew the photosphere fragment away, leaving the star with a sizable cold surface region beneath the dust cloud that the cooling photosphere section of the star had produced. Betelgeuse is now healing from this wound. The split piece of the photosphere, which was roughly several times as heavy as our moon, shot off into space, cooled, and formed a dust cloud that blocked the star's light from Earth-based observers. The 400-day pulse rate of the supergiant has also disappeared, at least temporarily. Betelgeuse's destruction attests to the blowout strength. Astronomers have been observing this pattern in variations in brightness and surface motions for about 200 years. The internal convection cells of the star, which are responsible for the regular pulsing, may be whirling around like an imbalanced washing machine tub, claims Dupree. The outer layers have stabilized, according to the Trace and Hubble spectra, but the surface is still bouncing like a plate of gelatin dessert as the photosphere is being rebuilt. Betelgeuse has gotten so big that its outer surface would extend past Jupiter's orbit if it took the place of the Sun at the center of our solar system. Hubble was used by Dupree in 1996 to resolve hot areas on the star's surface. It was possible to take the first direct image of a star besides the Sun. 
The ejected material may be seen as it moves away from the star in the infrared spectrum using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which will allow us to learn even more about the intriguing processes. To be clear once more, the outburst does not portend that Betelgeuse will soon undergo a supernova, but it does show how old stars shed their outer layers. Betelgeuse is too far away for it to have any more effects on Earth, but if it dies in a supernova explosion, the light would be visible from Earth during the day. What do you think about this enigmatic fading, and will the James Webb be utilized to monitor the star more closely? Will the mystery ever be resolved? Share the video with your friends and let us know what you think in the comments section down below.